Hi, I'm Fred, and I'm going to show you how to process your pancreas for storage. All right, here's our pancreas product. It comes from the provider in a box that weighs somewhere between 35 and 42 pounds. It varies from visit to visit. And these are the supplies we're going to use while we do the processing. I recommend you have at least one glove some sharp scissors, and of course the bags we're going to use for the storage. The first thing I do is open up a lot of Ziploc bags. Uh, I break my portions into something between a half pound and three quarters of a pound and wrap each what I'll call day's dose individually then freeze them, take them out two days before I need that particular one. So at any one time you are operating out of one bag in the fridge and thawing another. What I do is when I open the bag that was thawed the previous day, I go ahead and pull another one out. Uh, you'll notice I leave the bags open like this, pinched open, because as you're, it's a messy job. So as you're handling the pancreas, you don't have to open each bag. So just in terms of economy of motion and um, speeding the process up, have them all opened before you begin. Now, what I do is, as I fill each one, I don't seal it, but I put it in a little working space. You'll see right there. So I fill the bag, pitch the bag over there, and continue. Some people puree the pancreas. I don't have the equipment, and that would take a lot of time, particularly considering the volume, the sheer volume that we're going to be working with here. So, if, certainly you can imagine seeing your dog you know, given a chunk of a sandwich or whatever they might get a hold of, how they just snarf it right on down. Well, as far as I'm concerned, there's no harm at all in having bite-sized chunks. They don't necessarily have to be pureed, and they wind up in the same place anyhow. Um, this box is six or seven inches deep, so there's no way that I would be able to swim through here and cut this stuff all up and then do another series of steps in bagging them. So it's, it's a back and forth process. You cut some up, a few bags worth of smaller chunks, then you bag them, pitch them over to the staging area there, this little storage area I showed you a minute ago. And it is not pretty work, not for the squeamish or weak of stomach. This is um, extremely fresh product, and, and uh, there's a big old vein there, a blood artery. I'm not sure what it is, but I mean, uh, it's not pretty. And for the sake of time, I'll cut up one more chunk here, one more pancreas, and I'll bag it. Okay, the bag. Get a sense about how much it weighs. I don't use a scale. At this point, I have filled a whole box worth of 
plastic bag. So I've got 40 bags done here. And again, as you recall, they were pre-opened, put the meat in, pitch them aside. So they're unopened and not in an appropriate condition for stacking. So I try and do as much of it as I can all at the same time. So they're going back and forth for every single bag. We filled all the bags, pitched them over here. Now I'm going to close them one at a time. Then I'll come back and do the stacking and arranging the freezer. So all the bags have been sealed and I've got it staged here, stacked, to go into the freezer. I feed my dog more than is typically recommended uh, and I'll provide a link to uh, a website with instructions for how to do this. Three or so years ago, around three years ago, when my dog first came down with this, this illness, there was practically nothing on the internet about it. Uh, since then, there have been some sites pop up, and it's what I'd characterize as a burgeoning veterinary science. They're learning more and more about it, and this particular website that I'm going to put a link to um, is instrumental in these developments that are taking place. Now, I understand, if I, if I recall correctly, it's recommended for the average dog, you, you give them one to four ounces, I believe, uh, of the pancreas per meal. And you have to experiment with your dog it's from pancreas to pancreas in the box. The, the number of, you know, the amount of enzymes within a given pancreas is going gonna, is gonna to be different from one to the next. So you really don't know how appropriately, you know, there's no way for you to figure out what a particular dose should be. So what I did when I started was start with a little bit and I could, I could see that she was getting better and then I began adding more and more until her symptoms disappeared. I could see a dramatic change in her appearance, behavior, and uh, her, her puppy emotions. She was just nearly immediately happier. Uh, she, she, her limping uh, was gone within a day or two. And, and just literally hours after I, I gave her her first dose, I could see that something was different. That sounds like an exaggeration, but it really is not. Within hours, there was an observable improvement in her behavior. And uh, she began packing the weight back on right away. And she'd lost a tremendous amount of weight. It was horrifying to look at. She was withering away, drying up and disappearing right before my eyes. Uh, so I could, since her ribs were showing and her, and her back, had, she, she looked very bad. And, but because it was so dramatic, I could see the weight going back on her almost on a day-by-day -day basis because as those ribs disappeared and her, her back spread back out, uh, it was very encouraging for me. Uh, you know, it was an encouraging experience. So I feed her more than is typically recommended because I learned that way and I'm, I'm going to continue learning. I'm going to continue doing research now that there's, there's so much more of it available for us. Um, I'm going to continue uh, learning, but I give it, I give her that much because that's just how I learned to do it. That's around the amount, you know, and I, I eyeball it from the, from the, from the get, you know, I, I, I didn't have any way of figuring it out except by trial and error. <clears throat> when I came up with a, a dosage, you know, with, with a volume per meal that appeared to be working okay, I threw some more on it. And that's what I've done since. There have been times to where uh, I bagged it differently and it was different size bags and that kind of screwed me up because, okay, I, I, I'm used to doing it a certain way with a certain size bag. I got some smaller bags and I realized after I'd done it, I bagged them all with less meat in it. But she made it through fine. My dog likes it. 
The first time I put it in her bowl, she looked at me like I was insane. It was it was pretty funny. Uh, like, what am I supposed to do with that? Uh, now, she loves it. She knows first thing in the morning, she gets a little treat and uh, makes sure the bowl's full up and, 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 and goes to the pancreas. And, and it, it gets her happy. She, she loves it. So giving her a little bit more, no problem. You know, I'm happy to do it. And I, I don't know, you know, I can't define the science, so I can't prove it, but I just don't think it hurts her one bit having more than she needs. Goes, goes right through her. Um, and, and so th that's pretty much it. I do want to show you, I've got a few pounds left here. I don't know, six, eight pounds of it left to go. And I want to show you the amount of waste. I've got 40 bags. Got about 40 bags there. And I have exactly 40 bags, as a matter of fact. But this is what, out of those 40 bags, this is what is, you know, effectively waste. Not all of it. Like, here's a piece. It's got some of that hard stuff on it, but it's still got meat attached. And like a steak, you get a piece that's got, you know, a layer of this gristle or whatever it is, but then a good bit of meat on top of it. So rather than slice it all off, I just, I just you know, when it's appropriately proportioned, I just go ahead and cut it up and throw it in her bowl, and it's something to chew on. She likes it. This is, like I said, this is gnawable, you know, yum yum dog stuff. Uh, if there was a way that I had figured out to save it as like a treat, like a pig ear or something, I, I, I would have done it. I, if I think it through, I'll probably come up with a way to do it. But um, there is some waste involved. Don't let it. Uh, don't let it surprise you when, and, and really it's not that heavy, you know, it's, it's not that much. I figure uh, that's maybe a pound and a quarter, pound and a half right there. And uh, it's not like they're throwing it in there. These animals are just like people. Some have more fat than others. These are body parts and they're attached to other body parts. And it's not a particularly delicate process when they pull this stuff. Uh, out of the slaughter rooms, uh, they just you know they just cut it off and throw it in a pile. There's no you know not much finesse to it. So I hope we've helped you somehow. I hope I've helped you. And before we go, I'll show you Ruby, the queen of the world, the one who this party's all about.